Good evening, good evening. Looks like we should be good to go on sound in the whole works. I have a topic for today. Uh, it's something I get asked a lot and something that a lot of people cut down on the thought. We're going to talk about listing method. We'll get to questions. I'll, we'll color out some names and stuff in just a few minutes. I'd like to actually get to the topic, though, because I hear it all the time. I get posts, comments. My kids sometimes are the ones going through comments and things. So I, I hear the same ones. Sometimes I got a sheet. If you get this, mark a check mark. I go by quantity, obviously. So th the point of today is um, why would I list like 9.99 items? This is something I get. It's a valid question. Um, if you're thinking of it from a 9.99 standpoint, though, you're missing the whole point of what I'm doing. Now, let's say you list somebody else, everybody else is selling clothing. Let's say you got four shirts you can list or five shirts. You take your photos, you do your measurements, you get four, you, maybe you can only get four or five shirts up in an hour. I'm not sure. I know there's people constantly tell me that it takes some 10 or 15 minutes to do a shirt or something with the photoing, turning it, you know, putting it on a, a mannequin body or something like that. So there's a limit to how much you can get up. Now, if I could only get four or five items up that were only worth 10 bucks, obviously that would be ridiculous and I wouldn't be doing that. The items that I sell, I can list, most people here can probably get 45 or 50 of those items up in that very same time frame that someone may take, uh, a, a, you know, that whole hour to only list four or five items. I'm, I never look at it from a, a quantity, it, and that's the point that most people are missing right off the bat. You're looking at it from the entirely wrong way. What I look at is how much value I list in an hour, how much money worth of items were put up in that same time frame. In an hour, I can list 45, 50, I think at the most anybody here has ever listed was like 52 items in an hour. And we've got high speed, everything's on laptop, all the photos are scanned in a, a um, DS uh, duplex scanner. And that means it scans both sides of them in, in like a split second. In a minute, you can scan like 50 cards or some crazy. Maybe it's even more than that. So that's like 100 images you're doing in that same time frame. So even with me scanning images, I can still do 45 or better items in one hour. Even with me having to acquire the images through a scanner, it goes right into a SD card or wherever we're scanning them at the day. The, the point again goes back to, I don't care if, if you know, I'm listing more items than somebody else. Uh, again, it goes right back to list price. I don't list anything below $9.99. I also charge shipping for everything that we pretty much uh, ship out. So I don't, shipping isn't an issue. Ship, shipping is something I hear people say all the time with $9.99 and you got shipping. How can you afford to do that? I don't, I don't give away shipping. They pay for shipping on $9.99 items. So if they're buying a postcard for $9.99, they're going to spend, if it's going to California, California from here, it could be $4.30 to have that one postcard shipped with tracking. I ship them in 6 by 9s and they're in thick cardboard. They can't be uh, damaged. I don't get any damaged cards or anything else like that. They're sealed in plastic and, and the whole works. People will say, again, the, the, the shipping cost is too high. No one's going to buy from me. Well, people buy from me all the time and I get repeat business constantly. I mean, I've got a pretty steady stream of repeat business that comes in because of you know the quantities and things i have up so we're we're you're listing shirts that maybe cost 40 bucks you're getting five we're gonna say six maybe even if you're lucky if you've been doing this for a while up in that time frame so you've got six shirts worth 40 bucks 240 dollars worth of, of stuff up i can get 45 items so i'm just going to be let's just say 45 because i've got a video you can see me list that kind of quantity and they're 10 bucks a piece we're just we'll just say they're 10 bucks usually there's only you know, like 20 percent maybe that may be that low the rest of them are 15 20 30 40 bucks average price of the items i list may be higher than that i shoot for a 500 dollars an hour amount of items listed i don't if it's one item and it takes that whole hour to list and it was worth 500 dollars, i'm okay with that I don't worry about the, the amount of specific items. When someone else is listing something that takes longer, 
you got to take a bunch of photos for clothing. I only do a quick scan. It does both sides. It's one single zip through a scanner and it's done. And people are having to turn their their either their camera or turn your your um, mannequin or whatever you're taking if it's a three-dimensional object you've got to move and it's usually four or five photos for something bigger than that now we've my idea my method is to pick items that I can list a set amount every single hour I've got a ton of stuff here that's you know takes longer to list and that's we're just leaving that till the end at this point I'm listing the easy low-lying fruit so if something ever happens I've got such a huge backstock it couldn't even matter um, but but that's my method I go and literally have things that are quick and easy to list that I can list a mass quantity in average in an hour and I don't want to give you an exaggeration but even if the slowest person is listing 30 items in an hour here which is probably I don't think anybody lists just 30 items in an hour in honesty whatever we're, we're selling the average price isn't 9.99 the average price is more along the lines of 15 bucks or so of the sale price of the items that would be listed on there so you multiply that up it's a lot of money that's 450 bucks bare bones minimum that someone here lists in an hour or more you know if if i list certain things usually my my things that i list are usually more expensive because i'm the one who knows more about them i want to put the details in there and stuff like that so again i value my specific time and people that's how you should structure whatever business you're doing don't look at a number on a piece of paper for one single item and say that's going to uh break me or something don't look at it that way look at it by quantity you can get up and the amount of revenue that should come back for those or the amount of list price versus how much money you should get back if you list a set amount of items you're usually going to sell at least three to five percent the very first day you list them that's that's pretty much across the board uh, i've been getting that figure as the bare bones minimum for five ten years even maybe even probably ten years ago i think our our sell rate on the very day it listed was even higher um average but uh, anyway so you're going to sell some immediately when i do it this way too when i'm not worrying about um taking all the extra time to do five photos and turn and make sure lighting's right make sure there's no rips tears or anything else like that i'm able to get far more up and that means that i have more quantity of items so if you're worrying about only listing 40 uh, 40 dollar items they don't sell at 40 bucks eventually you're going to mark them down you may only get 25 bucks for them i'm able to list cheap items in a quantity of them three four times what most other people do in the same time frame and have more opportunity to sell more items i've got more items up four times the amount of items gives me four times the amount of items that could be purchased so i'm not fighting if you list five items in an hour six seven eight nine ten items an hour how many of those are going to instantly sell or sell within a certain time frame in the the current state of the market i guess that comes down to the point you've again i've got niches everybody i would recommend should know some area better than anybody else in your whole area so you can get the items like that they won't know what to do with it i guess is the point too the, the the method that works for us is this one and that's literally what i do 9.99 is the lowest item i ever list and return on my investment is um 13 percent i will just say 13.2 percent of it goes to ebay on average most of the items that i list one or two items pays for an entire chunk of items maybe i'll sell two items and pay for 100 items 100 different listings just from those two items that were purchased on that same day in the same same bulk sum i'll keep selling stuff from those i'll gain more revenue than someone you know taking more time to do certain things that's worried about a higher um roi i i don't worry about having the roi that high because uh, let's say somebody lists something today list 100 items today all of them are 9.99 they're going to sell three or uh, four of them minimum probably so 30 or 40 bucks bare bones minimum will probably come back in the very day that we list them and it's an hour's worth of work or two hours we'll say they're going to keep selling let's say six months down the road now i've sold 30 of those cards I've got a return on the labor from that one hour or two hours, you know, greatly increased from what, you know, the, the investment, 
it's it's uh it's a numbers game and i do say it's a game once you figure out how it works you're able to come in there and tackle it and in in have a methodology that works for you i could list easy to list you know 40 items an hour 9.99 only all day long just 9.99 items and still make a good return on that have good revenue coming back on it just do them all bins with no bo on them if i really wanted to i i would have enough quantity again up so i've centered in and again that's what i i would personally do if if you have the ex expertise or knowledge center in on stuff and bombard it you know quantity rules in many of these items you know the the aspect of worrying about it being a cheap item 9.99 i i don't i don't worry about that at all because again 40 45 easily can be listed an hour so that's 450 dollars there's no guarantee on on someone listing five or six items as i said that those five or six items are going to sell immediately on there good evening good evening just making sure that i'm not like speaking and no one's hearing me because i've done that a few times uh, yeah we'll get to some call outs in just a second here i've got a couple screens opened i get asked this question constantly or i see people posting it so i want to hammer this question for, for um put it all out there and, and hopefully if anybody does have questions on you know any other aspect of this hopefully you'll hit them up in the box or post them down there i take it seriously um when i say i have a value for my my an hour if, if i'm doing something i'm working for an hour i have to have set amount up or some production some value back out of that and that's how i feel with anybody listing here so is it it's pointless to list things that will take a long time to um, photograph like a, a ten dollar item that i've got to take 12 photos for i'm probably not going to buy it it's just not practical now that ten dollar item maybe i could throw it in with a lot and sell a bunch of ten dollar items just take a couple five photos of a bunch of those items all together instead of five photos of each one of those items it it comes down to streamlining it i almost have like an assembly line when it comes to listing the items that we do list uh frequently again i, I could list a ton of other stuff that i haven't touched that we have an in inventory i've got oh geez thousands and thousands of slides and movies and movie related items uh eight millimeter home uh, home films and so, i mean there, i've just got a massive amount we've we keep buying it I don't don't turn it away I've got some good stuff coming in and I've got some good stuff I've got but I, I try to buy volume of stuff that's quick and easy to list that has a reasonable uh, first day return three to five percent if I think I'm gonna get three to five percent from buying a big bulk lot of something minimum the first day chances are if I can list it and I can at least get 999 that's the type of items that I, I pretty much streamline for our business there's a ton of other people again that you'll hear that I only want to sell $500 items or $100 items or $50 items. I would love to just do that as well too and have enough of those where the quantity would outweigh it and I'd have constant, you know, access to those sorts of items. But in the real world that I'm in, there's not enough high dollar items to to float it across the board. I've sold, you know, 100, 200, 300, 4, 500 dollar items in the last week. I'll probably post a few. I sold a Santa Claus for 200 just a die cut. I just a few minutes before the show I sold a engraving uh for 100 bucks. I mean, we do sell decent dollar ones, but I don't I don't so much worry about those. Those aren't what ri uh, that runs my day. The bread and butter are the cheaper stuff that I have quantity, massive quantity up that routinely sell. Again, within a day or two of most any batch that is listed, it's already paid for. One or two items pay for it most all of the time. I buy in bulk. Um, I buy when it's dirt cheap, which is usually the summer. I don't wait till the winter to buy almost. I try to buy very little unless it's a killer deal in the winter months. Again, this all comes down to the methodology of, of listing. I make sure where I go, I figured out the sourcing for the areas for the items that I purchase routinely. Uh, that's that all comes into play too you're selling 9.99 items you've got quantity how do you get that how do you do this how do you do that it takes time and you're going to have to dig you're going to have to do a lot of research is probably the biggest aspect of it 
I do more research than actually the time it takes me to, to get the physical items in hand. And that's usually the case because I target everything. I don't, I don't just randomly go around. I know what's coming in in like a week from now. I know what I got coming in two or three weeks even down the road because I've already made the deal or it's a routine uh, stop that I go to to a picker or something that always has the same type of things on a set interval once a month or whatever the case may be. Um, and, you know, that's just the, the gist on it for me. Let's pop over to see who's here. And let me get to another screen. I'm trying to get to a live screen. I apologize. Um, let's start from the top if I didn't lose anybody. Uh, again, this is this is what makes me a ton of money. Enough money to not worry anymore about when it's going to come in. It's pretty much steady. Uh, if I need more money, all I got to do is work my eBay store or work one of the other, other site stores that I use. With eBay, all I do usually if I want some, some more revenue coming in, and it works, it's worked every single time, I swear to you, it's worked every single time, is I'll, I'll put out a, a markdown sale, 10%, 15%, whatever it comes out to be, and then what happens is I have a whole bunch of watchers rolling every single time. So if I had 100, 200, 300 watchers before I do this, now I've probably got four or 500. And if I hammer those throughout the day six, seven times, I can add a couple grand, in all honesty, boost to my sales in a week if I really hammer those. And again, I price higher. So you've got to perceive value in there. If I price something at 100 bucks, I don't expect to get 100 bucks for it. It happens sometimes, but I don't honestly expect that to happen. It's not the, the routine. Again, bread and butter are the cheaper stuff. The stuff that I can list in mass quantity, high dollar amounts of it. They don't all have to be high dollar, but again, I could list one item in an hour for $500 and, or 40 items for the same basic $500 you have a more of an opportunity to at least sell out of a 40 item uh, a lot versus one that one item could languish for some reason bad pictures you missed something didn't have the right keyword seo's wrong you, you just haven't optimized it well with cramming it you've got your word placement wrong so even when they're scanning you got the best words to the right they're not going to show up on a phone i mean there's a lot of stuff that goes into it so let's hop back over again let's Call outs. I got Artie Mike. How are you doing? Guten Tag and Guten Abend. Guten Abend is, is good evening and Guten Tag is good day. I took four years of German and I don't use it, um, but I did take it in high school, all years in high school. Marty, Jiminy Flip It, how are you doing? I Marty's got a site. He does put out videos here or channel, I should say. Um, I try to at least pop in once in a blue moon. I don't have much time with vision issues. I don't want to go back into the vision issues. I do have an appointment tomorrow with my eye doctor again. Hopefully something changes, but anyway, welcome in, Marty. Mr. Hale is here too. I've been working on um, throwing together a search video, Bob, just to let you know. Uh, so that hasn't gone to, to waste um, anyway. It'll take me a little longer. It'll probably be towards the end of this week, I'm assuming. End of next week, I'm sorry. Uh, Tom Romano, how are you doing? Good evening. Record Crate, good evening as well. Raleigh, North Carolina. I'd love to sit here and spin some records on here. I could probably play some that most of you have never, ever, ever, ever heard of. Um, whenever a genre comes up, I always got specifics in mind. I sent um, one of my patrons a, a clip, and it was um, Agent Double O Soul. And that's a, that's a, that's a floor stomper in my book. Um, Edwin Starr, if you don't know who that is. He does Backstreet and uh, War. Um, anyway, Northern Soul. Love music. I could talk about music all day long, honestly. I, if, I wish you were allowed to play it on here without getting uh, ding, because I'd love to have like an all-music episode with uh, going over it. I put some together for a Patreon video that's, that's there, but I'm going, going back and forth with how much I want to stick in the video and risk... Someone's saying I'm trying to uh, rip somebody's music off. Uh, anyway, let's pop on down. Marjorie, the stuffologist, how are you doing? I always did like the, the your handle there. Hey, Larry, Mr. Spicer in the house. Good evening as well. Winter Crow. There are Winter Crows. We actually have them up here. Good evening. Oh, well, how are you doing as well? Things have been going... 
Somebody asked me this sales, and I, I talked to, talked on sales with somebody earlier today for a few minutes. Sales wise, I, I honestly can't complain. Um, I we we slacked off for a few days, and and it showed in my numbers. And then I just went ahead and hammered um, uh, sales, and then we just listed a bunch of items, and now it's back up. And not only I I covered up, I filled in the gap. I'm now above what I should have been originally. Either way. I do projections, so I look at it on a daily basis, and I can tell if I'm up, down, or where I'm going, and if something's not steering in the right direction. You can just send out a quick sale for a day or two if you really wanted to. You can schedule them however you want. Uh, I know a lot of people that do sales, and they'll just do them uh, on the weekend. They'll just do like a two-day flash sale or something like that. All items in this category, if, if you've only got you know a set amount, will be set price. You can do, what's it, um, I think 10,000 listings in an auction, or maybe it's 5,000, I think. Five or 10,000, you can do that many, combine them, and you can do multiple uh, categories all at the same time with markdown, sales and markdown. It's the only uh, package thing I use on eBay, the only uh, marketing uh, tool I use off of their marketing tab. I've tried them all, and that one works the best for me. Again, I don't... I'm not trying to sell the items from the discount necessarily. I'm just trying to get the the opportunity to offer them something comparable with with my my pricing idea. But anyway, Judy M, how are you doing? Yeah, topic wise, I honestly get this question constantly. Um, I hear it constantly about the 9.99 uh, aspect of it. Again, don't I don't I don't include shipping at 9.99. I don't include shipping at 100 bucks. They always are charged shipping. So that take that out of the equation when you're thinking about this. Again, look at your own model. Maybe you include shipping. Fine, that's fine. It doesn't matter if you do or don't. Whatever works for you. If you did clothing, you probably have to. You're going to probably have to maybe even pay eBay to promote them if you're doing clothing to some extent, or books even these days. Video games, too, occasionally. It depends on if they're vintage. I find vintage video games I do far better with than the newer ones. Um, sometimes you'll sell a sealed NOS video game. You bought a bunch at clearance or something. Somebody will open them, return them, and you've already lost value from that. I know you can say no returns, but they can claim it skips or God knows what else. I've seen it all. So uh, anyway, let's pop on down. Trina Sirk, how are you doing? Good evening. Good to see you in again. Hey, uh, why are you speaking German? Annie's in the house, too. Annie does videos as well, too. I've watched quite a few of Annie's. Annie is, she's an eclectic stuff. She had one on Gouda Perka, I think, was the last one I saw. I don't know if that was posted this week or when, but I think that's the last one I saw part of. Atlas Attic, how are you doing? Good evening, good evening. Uh, Lisa Ledford, that's why retail price is everything at $99.49 or $59. The, that's, a, that's a marketing perceived value as well. Um, there's been studies done on the 9.99. It if you put 2.99 versus three dollars, the first number is is the thing that somebody's going to think about instantly. They're not going to be looking at at um, the fact that it's only one penny penny lower. They're going to see three dollars versus two dollars, and that's again goes to perceived value. Um, I've covered that even in co a college class before, talking about that. Just like um, cost benefit analysis of it. That comes back to you know setting your hours up. If you're working, you want to be as productive as you can for every hour that you're doing it. You don't want to be taking a minute here, doing this, doing that. If you smoke or whatever you do, don't take a break. You know here, do a solid hour hour or two before you stop and do something. Do do time management. Manage your time correctly so that if you're working or doing something, you're gaining a set amount of money: four hundred dollars, five hundred dollars. It may be a hundred for you. I, I, there's no right or wrong answer to that. As you get better at this and you know your stuff and you get a method down where it's like almost an assembly line, you'll, your value will grow. The amount of time that you have to put in to get a set amount of money back will will lessen. You won't have to put as much time in and you'll, your amount of money return should hopefully grow. That's the point. Again, it's not the individual items. Bread and butter to me is that is is our our model. I, I have a set amount of stuff that flows in. 
again, because I can get quantity up versus someone only listing a handful of items. I've seen people tell me that they can list anywhere from, say, four or five in an hour up to 10 or 12 uh, average items, not paper, I'm saying, in, in an hour. And, and to me, that's a, a struggling point. Uh, I've got mass quantities of paper, mass quantities of easily to scan slide or photo items and they're they're quick there it's an assembly line the buttons man you can you can photograph geez a good hundred and some odd buttons more than that probably you can take a photo with my little handheld clicker and all that stuff of a button both sides in like 10 seconds i mean it, it's you can do hundreds probably in an hour i i guess i would say i would have yeah a hundred and stuff like that like a magazine a comic book um, stuff like that. It's two photos for us. Unless there's an issue, you might have to do a zoom in or something. But, you know, I, I, I literally would, would center in on something that you get quick at and easy at that you can get quantity. Figure out what's your, your niche, what's your, your motivation in, in buying stuff. I, I get motivated from everything I sell. I like the history and I like to, I read sometimes the backs of postcards and things like that. I like that. It's cool to me. Uh, I enjoy it. Uh, so I guess if you don't enjoy it, you know, and you're just doing this for money, your motives are, are probably different than mine. So you might have different thoughts on it. Again, there's there's many different methods that will work for you. I don't have any, I sell 50 of this, 100 of that a day. It, I don't. That's not how I work it into there. I, I literally go by a dollar amount, a dollar amount. I, I Everything's by the, by the value of it. Um, at average amount of money, we get revenue a day, 300, 500, 600, 700, 800, whatever, whatever it may be for you or me. That's what I'm looking at. I want to keep that much revenue coming in and I weigh, you know, how much new merchandise is listed in an hour. Again, it's, it's all my time. I, I, it's your, your time is valuable and you've got to, you've got to take it seriously. Um, when you're doing it, you've got to center in on stuff that's going to get you the biggest return on your investment when you're you're photoing and listing stuff in all honesty so i'm so glad i gave up clothing oh my gosh and and when you look at that too you're investing time into what you're listing my return rate on what i sell these days versus clothing oh my gosh it, it's it's like night and day I, I almost never have a return opened um we did have a, a we had three uh, managed payments cases where the, the one, the buyer said that they didn't receive it, even though the tracking shows they received it and they stated in an email that their post office said that they handed it to them, but yet they still don't have it. eBay did close that one in my behalf. The other two person said they didn't recognize it, even though I have tracking that shows they got it. Um, I've done everything by the book. So even if eBay gives them their money back, let's pop on down here. And get to some more. Um, let's see here. Are you a collector? Good evening. Welcome into the house too. Uh, Tenna Duttenhofer. Good evening. Good evening. Rebecca Reed. Hey, Amazon seller ninety nine. How are you doing? There are many different ways to list. We use an API software and Excel uploads for some as well as uh, Site Direct for others. I he with API that would be like a CSV mass upload or something or with API you would list on one site and then it would pull it in like you could list on Shopify and then pump all those listings out through their API to all the other sites you want to list on we've got APIs we use right this very second uh, so you know um, I've got, I'll be announced next week. I should have some really big news uh, as well. I'm, I've got a, a big meeting next week with some a CEO uh, of something. Um, I'm hoping it goes somewhere, hoping there's some more opportunities. Um, maybe some stuff I can give away and stuff like that too, possibly like uh, free access or something for, for uh, without fees or something. I'm trying to work on another site uh, aspect uh, with somebody else. So, I should hopefully have some good news next week for some folks. I would imagine those in Patreon probably have an idea on what I'm talking about. I can't say much more than that, but um, uh, some some pretty interesting stuff has been developing behind the scenes for quite some time. Um, like our toys. I've got a, a, a carded toy sitting here. I can't show it yet, but um, I do have them here. Um, home injection uh, molded 
it's just like a store-bought toy. It's got a bubble. It's got printed card. The whole works. But anyway. Crazy Maze Stash, how are you doing? Uh, let's slide down a little bit more, and we'll pop back to the question at hand. Charles Lowe, how are you doing as well? Good to see you in the house, Charles. Angela H., welcome. Freed, thoughts on 78s using this method. Play, uh, test them. Now, I do not play test 97, 98% of every record that I list. I've sold records for a very, 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 very long time. I can grade them, you know, just by looking at them. So for me, it's just quick, I'm done, quick, I'm done, you know. I'm just doing it while while listing, or sometimes I'll write it off on my posties. I always have posties everywhere, but sometimes I'll just posty it. Everybody here knows how we list records, so um, even on Amazon, because we list mostly on Amazon if they're 78s and eBay. Um, I usually don't run the 78s to Discogs. I usually do better between Amazon and eBay on 78s. Um, I've got an opportunity right now to buy a collection all on one label of 78s dating from the 1915 through 20s and 30s right now. It's like 800 of them. They're all alphabetized. i got a list of them all. Um, you got to be a little cautious on that, and I say that only because of space. Uh, the price price I could probably get these this purchase at is well within the range to make some some pretty decent money. Um, it does look like they were cherry picked, like this person knows, and he probably pulled out like the high dollar ones is what it looks like to me. But I, I would be cautious on space alone. If you if you've not messed with selling or messing with 78s just sitting in storage improperly they can chip break pulling them out and not being careful you can chip an edge and crack a record sometimes too like with a 78 if if you're not looking at it really closely there could be a hairline in there and you totally missed it you know you, you just got to be careful with 78s you can never set them flat every 78 in in the building here is sitting on end in their tight together with other 78s so no single 78 is is sitting on its own you know uh, uh, with with 78s it's always best in my opinion to stack a bunch together you know one two three four you know like 20 or 30 and then we put uh like a divider between like so it's a bin number is what we do basically um a1 a8 a10 a20 p i mean i've got them all numbered just like i do my cards you can use the same numbers infinitely you know i can do p1 in every single category i got and i'll still always know where it's at because each category is stored differently um somebody once before made a comment that you know start with numbers first and you have more combinations well i don't i don't need any more combinations um, no one would because you can use P1 forever. You can use P1 50 different times and you always know you're not going to confuse a 78 record with a postcard. If I'm looking for a postcard, I know it's not in my 78 bins. Everything is clear. So I instantly can see there's no way a, a poster or a photo or anything else like that's in there. I store photos with photos. I store posters with posters, records with records. So I can always tell where everything's at. So I'm, I like the numbering system because I can just, it's simple, it's easy, and, and it stands out. Every single item, every single bin in here has the number written on it. It has a number uh, that matches where the shelf designation is as well, too. So, uh, But uh, uh, space, minimum condition for 78s. I don't do any below, say, a V minus in 78s. I, I just, I don't try to go low uh, below that unless it's, say, Brunson's uh, Rocket 88 or some like a four or $5,000 record, maybe, or some of the earlier Sun records, I'll go below. I've sold a 78 before that was broken in half. And the person that bought it, uh, they actually recorded it. I, I it was somebody I've talked to a couple of times. Um, they recorded it. They digitally removed the little tiny blips and then they burned it. I don't, not burned it would be the correct one, but they had a 45 pressed of it. Because it was a record that there was no 45s that were ever released. It was only on a 78. wasn't a huge hit. And, and long story short, yeah, I, space and condition, storage, you, you got to know all that to mess with 78s. Um, I, I buy them, you know, I've bought thousands of 78s at the same time. Um, 
you just got to know how to handle them and, and be safe with them. Uh, they, they are easy to take photos of because it's one photo of the front and one photo of the back. And I only photo basically the label when I do a 78 these days or any record really other than say something with a picture sleeve. If I'm doing 45s with the, the PS there with them, I'm going to have to do four images. One of the front of the sleeve, one of the back of the sleeve, front and back of the record. If I've got a, a LP, it's probably going to be four or five photos. So again, the time constraint goes up on it. I like messing with records. Don't get me wrong. I love records, actually. Uh, it's probably not a day goes by that I don't have something on a turntable, at least while I'm doing something here. I listened to uh, today was... Um, the Man Who Sold the World, uh, Bowie's album, from start to finish, both both sides of it. That was one of the ones I listened to today. Um, and then Montel uh, Jordan with This Is How We Do It came on, and I listened to part of that LP, too. Well, I say LP, but I guess that would have come out in an album. Um, Rose Smith, how are you doing as well? Hopefully that answered it uh, partially. Uh, Gina, always a VIP. How are you doing? I don't understand how you are selling what you do. I can't sell anything, any pickers in Virginia. Um, I sell collectibles. I mean, I, there's a chain of people that buy the stuff that I sell. And it's a routine. I, I mean, I the people who even write the books buy them from me. Um, I don't want to call his name, but um, there's a couple other people that I've talked to. That, in fact, there's one in the house now right now. Um you you got to know your your category, I guess. You got to know your items better than somebody else. Uh, just like I, I can sell things that other people can't sell, and, and it it comes down to photoing. The datability in collectibles is huge, and, and that's one that most people miss. If I list a vintage collectible of some sort, I try to date it within a decade or two every single time, and not just with vintage or old or something. You can get away with using like Art Deco era or something like that. It's perfectly fine. Arts and craft, perfectly fine. You don't have to put a physical date in there because anybody who wants arts and crafts is pretty much going to be able to date that. But when you're listing like uh, some a uniform, a uniform button, a specific postcard, a photo, um, a movie poster or something, you've got to add more data to it to make it more relevant to, to somebody who might be a collector. If I collect say, uh, Star Trek cards, and you don't put the date in there. It drives people that are collectors mad because you've got the 67 Leaf set, most prized Star Trek set there is issued in England. You've got the uh, 76 uh, Star Trek series set. You've got the Star Trek, the motion picture. Oh, well, there's, there's another one, too. There's a foreign set of the 73 Star Trek cartoons, and it was maybe released in a bread series or something like that. And then you got to go into, um, there's the Wrath of Khan. They made cards. I have them. You've got Search for Spock. They made cards. Voyage Home, they made cards. So everything you sell, it all comes down to trying to date it. If I list a Batman set of cards or something, there's a bunch of different Batman or X-Men. So everything I list, I try to date it. Like if you're listing Marvel Universe 1, you got to make sure you're putting that in there. Don't just put Marvel cards. Tie it to a specific... It, it, it's not... That's almost to the point where eBay's trying to get the item specifics, but the title word should be enough. I know they want us to sort it all down, but most of their stuff is just insanely... Uh, it's a big, awful rabbit hole in my book. Put it in the title, at least, and you should be safe in my, my mind. Um, hey, Ellen, how are you doing? Ellen Dean in the house, too. Good to see you in. Right below, Duncan from Australia. Uh, continue to annoy hundreds of sellers making page changes, and they can't even fix a simple problem like send invoice uh, error page. I get errors. This week I haven't had, I don't think... I do not think anybody here has run into an error this whole week, which would be a first if it runs through the rest of the week. Uh, usually we get one every day or something. Uh, sorry, it's not you, it's us. I see that more than probably any of the other ones. If I go, I use the bulk printer, uh, bulk uh, label printing option on eBay, if I'm using eBay to ship the labels. And it, I don't have issues with that. I know people tell me that when they do one by one, that's where, where it seems to be the most issues I think they've actually invested into 
proper technology or they they borrowed it from somebody else maybe they just bought it from somebody else somebody else maybe wrote the code maybe aiden or whatever might have but the bulk shipment option always seems to work for me once in a blue moon when i go to print it'll say uh unable to show or something it's got a little red line there and all you got to do is click the retry button it'll just retry just that that one uh, label that you need to print or the one uh, listing that you got to you know put in the weight and stuff and it instantly just fixes the issue so I don't I haven't had any label issues at all that I could say it's usually when I'm if I send an invoice out I was uh, constantly getting an error right after I sent it and I never knew if it sent it or not so I was constantly having to go back over and check my email the sent box to make sure it was sent it, it was annoying and I don't want to look like a fool and send a second one. I, I always check. I don't ever try to send a second one. If I don't know, I go to my sent box and I check it out. You know, sometimes I get, uh, you know, an email from somebody and I'll get two or three copies of it. You know, it, it's it. you want to look as professional and, and knowledgeable as you can when you're doing this. So that's why you've got to make sure you don't do those those stupid mistakes. If, if for those who on Patreon, if you watch my last Patreon video, I literally made a big mistake and I forgot to turn on the microphone. I left it in there. You can see it just to show you that everybody makes a mistake. Um, it happens. I've had live shows where I haven't clicked the sound on until a few minutes in the conversation. I always check these days because, you know, you get moving. I'm literally just flying in here and, you know, at quarter till is when I set up everything for the show and stuff. That, that was my time frame. Um, I, I usually work from six to seven or eight at night, usually during the week. In all honesty, I've been taking a day or two off on the weekend lately, just eye issues. And, uh, it, my, I don't get as many headaches when I do that too. So it does help. Uh, yeah, I know there's a bunch of errors, Duncan. So I'm not trying to make, make light of that. Cause I, I, I get the error crash notices and stuff too. I, I can't say. I asked a bunch of folks if, if people were, would say that it got better or worse with eBay. I'm still. I, I can sell anytime I want. If again, if I want to boost my sales, I just throw a uh, uh, sales markdown and then offers to watchers. It works. I, I I swear to you, it's worked every single time I have done that. Every single time. And what we've been doing a lot of as well is going back in and fixing our old photos. And it's again it. it Fixing the photos on eBay is is just like me listing all those new, brand new from scratch, it, it appears. Because the minute the photos were were uploaded, what happens, the original photo was stored on, on a server here from those that I listed in, in 2016. I've got listings up that were listed full-fledged in 2016. The minute I delete the old photo and then upload a new one, it's stored in a completely different spot. It, it's got a pull from somewhere else. And not only that, it's got two different spots it's got a pull from if you've got two photos. One photo is stored with the mainframe structure of the, the listing, basically. And then the other one is stored on some database somewhere. That's why we know that's how they do it, because when they, they lost the links, they lost all the extra photos a few years back when they lost tens of millions of, of sellers' photos, mine included. Um, let's pop on down here. Hey, Dom, primetime treasure in the house. Hopefully you are doing well, Dom. I have not watched much of anybody's. I did catch a few minutes of one of his the other day. Um, I, I like the bolo video kind of thing. I like talking about stuff more. I'm not so much into, um, games and stuff like that. No offense to anybody. It's just nothing with Dom does great videos adore Dom as a friend he's a real good guy and all I just I just if I'm gonna take the time and have my eyes on some screen or listening I've got to have very specifics um uh, just me I'm I'm not I if if I watch something like that I got to constantly be looking at what they got and I just oh well I know I'm ranting Michelle how are you doing Michelle good to have you in the house uh yeah, I talked for a while. I probably rambled on and wasted a lot of time here. I know we got to the topic to start with, but business is a game you keep score with money. Very, very, very true, Bob. I take this 100% serious, um, like laser-focused serious when I'm out doing anything business-related. I don't uh, chat. I don't do I, – I go right to what I'm doing in – my free time is spent with the family or, you know, here doing something with, with, with our stuff. 
I'm, I'm very focused on this. I've went out with, with folks on a couple occasions and they, they, I don't want to offend anybody because somebody might be watching this. Uh, I'm, I'm business oriented. That's all that matters to me. If I'm in, in business hours, I've got a set amount of time. I'm, I'm, if I start work at six, I work from six to whenever I'm going to cut it off. And then whatever else happens is fine. But between that time, I treat it. If, if I can't do that, if I was working for somebody else, I don't do it for myself. And again, it comes back to productivity, your, your productivity. If you can't get a set amount of things up when other people can, you've got to figure out why that is. Your whole whole point on the method or however you list your items is to streamline it very aggressively, to have everything uniform, all the same, quick, easy, a, a literally a assembly line of sorts. And that's literally how we do it here. Through the scanner, onto a card, everybody knows literally how everything is listed. They'll, they'll already be set up. You just click sell similar for another one. You pull a bin number that you're going to put them in. You change very minimal amounts of things in the title as well, too, because we try to list like-to-like -like items right next to each other. Detroit postcards all together. Um, buttons from the Army all together or lots of buttons all together. Lots of postcards, posters, comics. Don't bounce around with whatever you're listing, whatever you're doing. Streamline everything. Um, that's why the, the bulk... Uh, label option is probably the best there is for that. You can also print a pick slip out of there, which will give you the titles. That's again another reason why I use the the title to put my custom um, bin location or SKU. And I know there's a custom SKU line. Everybody tells me, hey, why don't you use the custom SKU? Well, I can instantly have everything show up at a pick slip using the specifics. Um, maybe they've added the option in to use the custom SKU, but it wasn't in there before. I, it's all uniform. I know where everything's at. So does everybody else. I guess that's a real big key to it. Hey, Black Crystal Dice. How are you doing this evening? Good to see you in the house again. Uh, Trina, how many uh, items should I list uh, initially? I, I would always list something. If you can list five minimum a day, I would list five minimum a day. If you're not spending any extra to list more items and you got the time, list. List to your heart's content. List to your fingers are tired. Or you just don't want to list anymore would be my honest recommendation. If I need money, again, there's there's two easy ways to get more money on eBay. Easy, easy. Nobody, there's no right or wrong way. List more items. List good items. Don't just list junk. List more items or pump out a sale or something and then offers to watchers. Those always get us sales. If, if I need more money, I just list, I grab something that I know will, will fly off the shelf. I don't, I've got so much stuff. I don't worry if stuff that's I've got money into or sitting here um, sits for the most part. Now, some items are relevant by when you're selling them. I have uh, the George magazine, and I've talked about that. It was shooting up. As soon as the election results came in, the value plummeted. So it, some of the items that you have, I was a month late on the market. I talked about this with a couple other people the other day, actually. I was a month late. If I had that magazine in a month before it, I would have got top dollar. I would have gotten the three, 4000 Right now, I put it up for basically $800, and it has the opening bid with 29 watchers. So who knows what it'll sell. I have nothing into it now. I sold a couple of comic books the other day for three twenty-five for a Raphael comic, and I sold the second one now, too. So I, I got nothing into that magazine. That $800 is just 13.2 13 to eBay. The rest is mine, minus uh, federal tax. It's, so it's going to be a quick 600 700 bucks back to my pocket for something minimum. You know, so time does play a factor in some things, but very rarely do I worry about it in certain items. Most items I sell are 100 years old or 50 years old, 70 years old, and they they hold their value to a good extent. A shirt. Let's say you're in the clothing and you sell clothing and you got a whole bunch of shirts. Shirts go out of fad. There's There's part of your... Inventory could be dead inventory at some point when no one wants to buy it because no one's wearing that specific shirt, that specific style. A specific jean brand will go out of style. 
somebody will some person who works for the company will say something awful in the news and you know it'll no one will want it anymore that kind of thing can happen with with newer stuff or clothing and, and stuff like that so that always that's another factor every I, i'm i'm purchasing merchandise and selling things like i'm playing the stock market i'm very precise on on items and categories that that the the category is going up in value if you've watched the channel value wise at one point like um well, let's say my roller skating labels. I sell a bunch at thirty-four fifty, but I send out offers, or I was sending out offers down to fifteen ninety-nine and selling a bunch that way. Well, price-wise, they're hot right now. So I've, the lowest I've been selling them now is nineteen ninety-nine, and that's a change throughout the year. Again, pandemic pricing, things have went up in many, many, many different categories. Again, I'm not in a hurry to sell a bunch of stuff that will get me good money because right now certain things are hot and I can list a lot more of those things than I can some of the other items. I, I, I've, I've said that before. We have like a 90-day plan. Nowadays, it's more like a year plan. I've got stuff that we purchased year, two years ago that we haven't even touched. And I'm talking quantity of stuff. You buy it when it's cheap. Again, if it's cheap in the summer, I'm going to load up on it. This year, I probably won't because I don't really need to. I'd have to rent more storage or something or, or figure something out because we're full. We're still looking for a bigger place, but uh, anyway. Hey, Tom, how are you doing? Oh, yep, I'm sorry. I already did call you up. You're, you're, I'm way behind. Let me try and get to some more comments, questions, if anybody has any. Lena, welcome. Good to see you. Idaho, uh, right on, Bob Hale. Tina, let's see here. Judy Arnold, how are you doing? New Hampshire. I've been in, in through New Hampshire. We threw, uh, flew into um, Portland, and then we drew, drove through all of New England a couple of times. It was awesome. We were up there in the fall, and the, the color changes. And then we were up in there in the spring, too, with fields of flowers up in New England. It was just awesome. Went whale watching off Gloucester and the whole works. It was an incredible experience up there. We were there in the winter once, too, actually. Uh, let that pop down. Yeah, I hate doing clothing too. Clothing's a rat race these days. Um, with like Nike's going to start selling used shoes. They've already signed some deal. Thread ups in, in department stores, thread ups in malls, from what I see. Half the stuff I see or the wife looks at ends up being thread up. And she's had some bad experiences with thread up just because they've turned into a big monster and they, they don't have enough customer support. They were, we returned something. It took days. We actually opened a case because they didn't refund the money. You know, that that's with thread up. Oh, hang on, hang on. I don't usually pop off the screen. I've got the crayon holders. I got a whole bunch of them. I, in fact, I created a link and then I never posted it. I'm going to post a link in my Patreon page first. And then after my Patreons, if anybody wants them in Patreon, I'll um, post a link on maybe my Facebook page too. Uh, but these work perfect. It's, it's identical. This is the same thing that's in the Mighty Men and Monster Maker, the Barbie designer kit. That's what these come from. There is a pastel one and I don't, honestly have it here but you can print a, a replacement ones if you want to for any of those sets i think there's a star wars set even in a couple other different versions of it but these work perfectly uh, my son printed a bunch of these he filled a platter on his printer with these we, we've got a couple um 3d printers we've been messing around with those for stuff like this um clips holders i've got my gimbal here too so <coughs> Excuse me. So you're going to see some uh, new videos. We reshot a bunch of Weeble stuff. So Weeble's videos are are coming up really, really quick. I know I've said that before. Everything takes time. And I've got a lot of projects projects going around. I was ghost. I ghost wrote something for somebody else the other day. And I wrote something for a site to uh, somebody I know. I told him I'd give him a hand. Let's pop down here. List and sell. Yep, yeah, just build it. You, you've got to build up. You can't... I, I hear 
tons of people asking, well, how many items should I have up totally? When's it going to change? When's, when's my revenue going to be a steady, steady stream? When I hit 10,000, right in that mark there, things did seem to, 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 to become very steady. It was a steady stream, and I could literally almost set my watch by how much revenue we had on every single day of the week. It, it, it's quantity, and it wasn't just in one category, so I wasn't locked into just selling postcards or just selling trade cards or records or, or anything. I, I sell a ton of different things. Maybe it's not shown so much in some of the videos I put out, but I sell anything really vintage that's easy to list and quick, and I don't mess much with all China. There are still some that I buy, but there, there's so many opportunities and things to sell that just people don't know about, you know? You are in Patreon, Ellen, so you, I'll, 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 I promise you, I will try and get a post up for these. It'll just be, I, I think we said eight bucks shipped with, um, it's just a little piece of plastic, but I wanted to send them, I can't send it in a regular envelope, so I was just going to do a uh, first class packet um, so it'd be just a couple bucks, uh, cause it took, I want to say six hours or seven hours to print a platter of these. Um, and it took like a eighth of a roll or something like that. I don't remember. <clears throat> I'll come up with some fair, I'm not trying to make a big profit or anything off these cause it was time consuming for somebody to, um, set it up and all that stuff and make sure the crayon fit and then to print it several times. Anyway, long story short, I'll put a link up for it. I promise. Yeah, thank you, Freed, as well. Hopefully that helped you out on that. Santiago Lendez, how are you doing? I'd like to hire a person to list. What do you feel would be a fair starting price to pay the person? I would pay by the hour. I would look at what minimum wage is and offer a little higher than that. If you want somebody more reliable, maybe, you might even think about running by some of the uh, antique malls in your local area and somebody who works there asking if there's anybody they would know who may be interested in. One time, well, I should say the last time I did that, it turned out that they had people that they hired that listed for them, and they turned me on to some, like, group of, I guess they were college students or something, and, um, you know, you could it was like a service, and they already knew how eBay worked and all that stuff. They listed stuff on their own, and then they they uh, charged by, I don't, it was, I don't remember the, the amount, but it was very within reasonable amount. You're going to probably pay over minimum wage. You want to pay a couple dollars over what minimum wage is. Don't do it per item because if they don't do enough to equal minimum wage per hour, you've got to pay the difference if they're an employee of yours. Now, you can do the, what's it, the contract-wise, uh, what's it, the 1099 or whatever it is. You can do do it as like a contracted employee where, you know, you just do a set price or you work out some deal with it. They've got to just, you know, come up with if they feel that's fair or not. It's a little different aspect. I pay as their employee of the company. You get some tax basis, some tax breaks, I should say, by doing that. It'll if you pay ten dollars an hour, it's going to cost you roughly a dollar extra for workman's comp and all that stuff, and a few extra cents for <clears throat> your accountant to handle the um, the payroll. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. I have an accountant that does that. I don't. I don't put in the payroll. I just give them the hours. This person where I, I just it's an email I sent out honestly, and then they upload it to um, shoot. They process it. They submit it, and then they upload a copy of it. It's a Copic or it, it's some kind of legal site, and I'll have full access to everything. I can print off and do it anytime from that point on. So I'll never have to worry about if I forget something, lose something. It's always available. It's like a database storage site that the uh, most of the accountants I've talked to use. It. Both the ones we use, are, which are different, um, uh, use that basically the same surface, uh, service. <clears throat> uh, it, it, price wise, too, it's going to depend on the state you live in because your state's uh, minimum wage is going to be different. Every state could have a different one. It, it, there's a national one that they have to do it, and then states can have it higher higher than the national one, which many do, actually. Uh, 
Atlas Attic, if I have nothing to list <clears throat> and I end item and then sell similar, if you've got nothing to list, I mean, if you don't mind spending the time, for for me, if I just do, um, you know, it automatically relist every 30 days, on the 30 days, there's usually a boost. If someone's not looking for it, it's not going to matter what you do. You know, if it's not a flooded category, I, you're wasting time in my personal opinion. I just let them run. Because it's just going to take the right person to, to come on and buy a 1907 postcard from some town that still only has 100 people living in it. I mean, it's it's just it's just going to take the right person for most of what I sell. I don't spend that time. I would, I, I if I'm going to spend the time, I would spend the time to set up a markdown to get the offers to watchers and then send the offers to watchers out. That's what I would personally recommend. I feel that gives me a far better return on my my investment in time than anything else or upping, you know, upgrading my photos. Everybody doesn't have tens of thousands of photos or tens of thousands of items, so I know that's not something everybody can do. But most people when I'm looking at stores, again, this is why I brought that up, I look at a lot of stores. Most people when I'm looking at their store have a bunch of items and I can usually tell the ones they listed when they first started doing eBay. The photos are never as good as how they are right now. In every single store I looked at. So most everybody that I've looked at, I think everyone, I can't think of one that didn't have at least some old photos. That would be another area, as I said. I would hammer all of those. That should get you some good results in all honesty. Uh, let me call it out. If you're enjoying the conversation, please hit that thumbs up. Give the, the channel some love there. Got 180 some odd folks in the house, 61 likes. I know I'm, I'm terrible at even saying stuff about that, but if you're enjoying it, just hit the thumbs up, please. It does give some action to the, the channel. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Duncan, every time I review an eBay seller's items, they are not doing things properly. One big... Uh, one is two word titles. How do you think uh, something is going to sell with poor titles? Poor <clears throat> keywords. I just did a video in, in Patreon on keywords. Even some of the items that I, I show in there and we talked about, even the people who sold them for decent money missed some more keywords in there. How do I get more money for many items than most other people do in a lot of the items that I sell? And I can, I've shown videos just on everybody else's items that sold and then me selling the exact same item for two and three times it keywords <clears throat> dating them you know uh, the photo oh my gosh the photo a zoom in i would say a zoom in personally gets me 20 maybe even 30 percent more sales than not doing that if your gallery image the one that they're going to be browsing through is just small and i can't tell what's in that image because you didn't didn't highlight something you didn't fill up the 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 photo I will sell more because of that than you will if you're not doing that. I can pretty much guarantee you and show you on a spreadsheet the ones that do that do have the uh, zooms versus the ones that don't. I can even do a zoom in and then sell it fairly quickly right after we did it. Just like upping the photos. When you do a zoom in, you're actually uploading a new main image. And that's the key to it. You're changing one of the three prime parts of a, the foundations of a listing. A listing is tied together on a frame, basically. You got the title, the one main image, the one that shows in the gallery, and then the price. If you change one of those aspects, either by uploading a new image, again, you don't have to do a new one to get a zoom in, but getting a zoom in gives you a fresh new image. That totally changes the whole structure because it's pulling from a different spot in the database. It's got to recategorize it. It's got to uh, show it differently after that point. And the, the proof is in the pudding. When I have items that are, are selling, I think I just missed a super chat. Hang on. Hang on, folks. I don't want to miss anybody. I'm terrible on that stuff. Hang on. My feed's frozen. Matt, well, thank you very kindly. Your video is frozen. Well, that's not good. Let's see what I can do here. Yes, you are correct there. Let's see what I can do. Hang on, folks. Let's see if I can't. <clears throat> Unless I lost signal. Hang on. I'm sorry. We are working on it.
Still here, hang on. Okay, it looks like I got it, and I don't know what happened, but it looks like we should be back. Yeah, give me just a second here. <clears throat> Thumbs up. Hang on, let me pop back up to where we were. Yeah, it looks like we're unlocked. Do apologize, I'm not sure what happened. Everything looks straight on my end. I don't know if it's maybe YouTube or what, but... Let me pop back to where we were. <clears throat> yeah, looks like I'm fine now. Sorry about that. Uh, hang on, I'm just trying to get back to where we were. <clears throat> Bob, um, I keep asking uh, state sales and garage sales for photo slides, sheet music, and other bulk items. I have gotten small bulk lots, but no huge scores. It's going to take time to figure out where they come in. At church sales, for sheet music, it's always been the best. If you want sh uh, sheet music, every church sale I think I've ever been to, around here anyway, has sheet music. Usually older ones. Not necessarily large format, but um, check ads. Um, local auctions. Local auctions are usually pretty good for all of those sorts of things, too. Estate sales for photos and slides, I, I usually find at... Geez, almost every one around here anyway, at least the ones that I go to. If if you want to know, too, before you go to some place, usually I just call them. I'll call before the sale goes and ask if they have any quantity of this, that, or the you know whatever I'm looking for. Um, Atlas Attic, when I list something that uh, has a lot of information, I have to pick and choose the best title words because eBay only allows so many until it's cut off. Yep. Also, when you're listing, consider 30-40% of people may be looking from their phone. So everybody knows if you're, if you're on your phone and you're looking at a title, it's only going to have the first so many words. All the important keywords have got to be to the far left. Like if you're selling a postcard, don't put the first word postcard. That should go all the way to the right. The left side should only be reserved for maybe RPPC. You could probably get away with putting a real photo, but you want the key stuff all the way to the left on any listing that you do. You got to you got to do that. It, it's a necessity. Uh, yeah, they're not doing the research. Uh, Trina saying for Duncan with um, not putting enough in their titles. I don't always fill up titles. There's a few cases where fewer words work better. Um, where there's an opportunity that maybe something's rare. When people, some people's philosophy when they're looking to buy something on eBay, or they're a collector. They they think some people aren't going to know what they have, so they'll look at the obscure ones that are very generic titles, hoping for it. That sometimes can get more people into your listing and push you up in viewers in in views, get you a little more attention and attraction to it. There are some cases where just a couple of words could be useful, but not a whole lot these days that, that I would say that would qualify. I do do that, though, sometimes. There are some rare occasions where that does work. <clears throat> uh, Annie, do your pickers get their stuff at estate sales and auctions? I don't honestly know where they get all their stuff from. I know some of them get them from auctions because if I see something at an auction, sometimes that I know one of the ones I talk to is going to, I'll ask them to buy it for me if they would. And I'll usually give them, you know, extra 20 bucks or something just for picking it up sometimes. It just depends on who it is and stuff. I don't really know where they get some of the stuff from. And I don't really, I never even ask. I don't really, it's not a concern. As long as it's legally acquired, I don't really care. Uh, but I'm sure they do. They just, they, they're in different areas of the place, uh, different areas of the state that I don't go to. They're farther away in most cases. So instead of me just being able to source or get somebody to get me stuff here, I can go within a, a big loop or a, basically a circle around us. And one guy gets it from, you know, 50 or 60 miles away. I don't have to drive. And he's going to go to the same sales if I did drive. You know, I'll, I'd rather pay a little commission and you know, for someone's time than me driving out there and hoping to find something. Because he's going to do it anyway. I wouldn't do it unless I figured I'd get something out of it. 
you know <clears throat> i don't i don't really even ask them much anymore where they get the stuff i used to but what do i care i mean sometimes they're wheeling and dealing or who knows i don't even know maybe they got it from another dealer for all i know debbie how are you doing debbie brunner carleen harper how are you doing as well Oh, hang on, we're going to try and get to some more questions. Don Wright. Well, good to have you in for the first time live. Got to see a mess up. That happens quite often, I guess, on my channel. Uh, yes, that is a big one. Sellers not researching, just list and forget. Then they complain, so sales. If, if you want more sales, you either list or you go back in and you can check some of the listings you have up. You know, many times if I'm looking at stores too, there's titles, keywords, all kinds of things that are missed. I always use the pug dog example because if you just put dog in a title, it won't sell nearly as easily as quickly or, or for as much money if it's a pug and you don't have the word pug in there. Everybody who owns a specific type of dog buys that type of dog collectibles. If I saw something cute like a glass or mug, coffee mug for the wife with a chihuahua on it is key. <clears throat> 192 uh watching and 86 likes so we're getting close love to get to that 100 mark as soon as possible uh joe the bread man reseller channel one way to get the deal have the money available to buy don't uh live high on the hog it's been a huge key to getting mass quantity of merchandise have the money yeah um <clears throat> it's not always possible when you're first starting off when I, if I'm going to pick up something, I'm always there early. Always. I'm never, ever late. Well, I, the car had an issue the other day. I was late for something for the first time in I don't know how long, but um, I'm never late and I always have enough cash to purchase anything. I never, I've got dealers and, and people that I buy from that I could, I'll pay you next week and they wouldn't care. I always have the money. If they find something today and they need some cash, if they call me and it's something good, they know they can get the money immediately. I always have the money handy. I don't care what it is. Um, <clears throat> until the revenue starts coming in, though, that's going to be your, your issue. You won't be able to have enough revenue coming in to reinvest like that. We spend a couple thousand bucks, even right now, and I'm not really buying, a couple thousand a week. This week we spent over that in purchases. One week we bought six grand in comic books. So you got to have the money. It's the only way to, of course. <clears throat> it's going to be. It's going to take many people out their time. I couldn't do that for three, four, maybe five years of my, my time. I was unable to do these big purchases. I didn't have the money. We were just paying the bills and worrying about the bills and you know life in general. There's just There wasn't anything extra to invest in big, huge lump purchases. But the minute we were able to do it, it's it's we've never looked back. I've never worried about that kind of thing ever again since we've been able to do our first massive purchase. <clears throat> it's paid for itself. It makes us a horrendous amount of revenue on a constant, steady basis. The big purchases, the, the mass purchases are, are what, what the, our bread and butter is too, mind you. <clears throat> this week, I should have in 1,200 nice trade cards from a collection. Uh, really nice early ones, 1870s. There's a couple 1860s invitations in there. <clears throat> I've looked at them in person. Um, I've, we've went back and forth over price for a little while on this, a month or two, but, um, well worth the wait. I finally ended up getting them. Um, there's some printer ones in there for some printers that will probably get me five to $700 each card. Um, and a couple of those should pay for them. I already got a buyer from them. They're not even going to go to eBay because, um, I, again, I know the, the guy who writes the book and I know two other major collectors. Anytime I get high dollar ones, usually I can just put my asking price on them. I don't have to quibble. I don't have to worry about eBay or any other fees on another platform. Um, I used to do that with records too. I would send out a mailing list of my rare Northern Souls and usually was able to sell them at top dollar um, that way because they paid me top dollar on eBay. I would just I'll list them on eBay if they don't want to pay it. And that's that's usually I just ended up selling it directly, and I wouldn't have to pay the fees. So it was just my my uh, income tax I had to pay on it. <clears throat> Judy was an exchange student in Germany in 1972. 
One of my uh, good friends had a Irish exchange student um, that stayed with him for quite some time. We used to hang out even. I, we used to drive around and do stupid things with him even. He was a pretty cool kid. Hey, Aaron, how you doing, Aaron? Good to see you in the house. <clears throat> um, Pitter Patter 100, welcome. Another one from Australia. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Land down under. I, so one of these days, I need a Vegemite. Somebody needs to really send me a Vegemite. Dun Duncan said he was going to send me some Vegemite. I never got any Vegemite. I just listened to Men at Work. Uh, it was on in the car, and, and um, come from a land down under, and Vegemite sandwich is always mentioned in there. That come to mind thinking about that. Thank you, though, Pitter Patter 100. Hang on, my feed now. There we go. Well, thank you, Tom, as well. Tom Romano. Always glad to see that somebody's enjoyed the 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 videos enough to stick it through that long. Uh, research takes so long as you start a new niche. Yes, it does, Ellen. <clears throat> I can say though, if you don't invest the time, you're not going to learn anything new. Everything that that I've ever done in any of this industry, anywhere else I've ever been, is taken time. If if you get hired to work at a restaurant, even as a manager, it takes three months for them to train you. Three months, you are going to be living in a hotel if your store isn't a training store. They'll send you to another state. They'll fly you there. Uh, they flew me on the last few that I, I used that I did years back, of course. But it's three months just to run a store, a store, a restaurant as an assistant. You know, it takes three months. And even after you do the three months, they don't let a, a new assistant close the store and they usually don't let them open for another month just to make sure that they know what they're doing and they understand the differences. Everything takes time. You're talking months to learn anything to a, a qualified level to, to talk on it. Let's say buttons. Again, I, it's something I love. So I don't always try to go back to buttons because I sell so many, there's hundreds of other things besides that. But I, I know those as good as most anybody other than maybe a, one or two guys who wrote the book on them. Um, I've, I've been into them for 25, 30 years probably. So I know them very well. It, again, it's taken me a heck of a long time in all this to figure out this and that. Stamps, same thing. It's taken me a heck of a long time. Comic books, the same thing. It, unless you're like into the niche or you spend the time, you're never going to know it. You're not going to know a, a first appearance of somebody like a Showcase 4, The Flash, First Silver Age. or so. You're not going to know those aspects on what's so important about a comic, so, for example. If you're not into records, you might not know who Cy Hightower is or somebody somebody who has a $1,000 record. Again, that comes back down to you have to invest time into it. If you don't invest the time, you're never going to know enough about anything specifically to, to be able to be dangerous in that area. You want to be dangerous when you're out there sourcing. And dangerous, I mean, you want to be able to get all the good stuff and not leave anything for anybody else. Um, greedy or not, if, if you're spending the time investing into that, you don't want somebody who doesn't really know the air just to come in and, and, and get the stuff and you're left with nothing, just holding the bag, so to speak. I, I The areas that I, I'm in, and there's probably a dozens and dozens I've never even talked about, but the areas that I sell in, I know them very, very well from doing this for 27 years or whatever else like that. So there's nothing different between me, but again, it comes down to time, researching. I've spent 27 years... Plus, if you go back to when I was seven and getting comic books through comic, you know, 10, 10 years of heavy comic book collecting or stamps or whatever, I've got all that extra time into it, too. I didn't just open up a book and then instantly the next day I can do anything or I know anything. Everything takes time. I've invested the, 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 the time into it, though, to learn it. I, I thought the same thing. Well, if I do this, I'm going to waste time. I'll be slower. In the long run, I may have lost a little time a week here, a week there, but now I'm I'm dangerous in so many areas when I'm outsourcing. I can walk behind people and pick up stuff that they just totally missed. If I'm there first, chances are I, I, I scored out all the good stuff. I cherry-picked the lot, whatever the case may be. That's what you've got to do to be the most effective at this. You've got to spend the time. If, if I'm out looking at, say, let's say there's a bunch of records and there's other people here who are in a state sale, and I can't stop anybody from looking at records that are right in front of me. I can't say they're all mine. 
you got to be quick. You got to know enough to be able to be quick to beat the other guy to the best records. And that happens if you're in a big sale. That's going to happen. It's going to happen more often than you think. Or if you're at a thrift store looking through the records, you got to be able to go through those records or postcards. I'm sure you've seen me look through postcards. I'm really quick. I've, I, I've, you, you get an eye for it. You know which ones routinely sell. The looks, the feel, what's shown in them coins the same thing there's a, there's a ton of coins that can get you okay money but can you tell a variety or do you know which s s version of this penny or that's worth way more than the other one uh 1909 do you know the versions of which one's going to get you the most money it's all that kind of stuff you've got to sink the time into it if you don't sink the time into it how are you going to expect to expand your business you can go and in in fact i've got a couple of sales on ebay right now you can go um, out and source and miss a ton of stuff because you didn't spend the time. You can continue just to look every item up on the phone because you don't know any specific categories. When you know and invest the time, you'll spend more time trying to find those items. And if you spend more time trying to find those items, you should be able to find more and do better in those categories to make it worth your while. All the categories that I've delved into and expanded as a niche, I've expanded my my inventory of those items and I've I've grown my revenue from those specific items because of that. I, I make more money from the same items that a lot of people out there sell because I know more about the items. I dating I I dating is critical, not just antique or vintage. If you can date an item um prior to like if it items before nineteen forty, I try to put a date on it. If it's past nineteen forty, I usually just put vintage like there's there's two ploys in that. You want to be able to date like a button or anything that's pre say World War One. Things that are after World War One, uh, you, you I hate to put a specific date because if someone's if I put like it's a it's a 1970 item, they might assume ah oh, that's newer than I want. That's not that old. If you put vintage, they might think it's older than it is. So again, there's sometimes there's a ploy in how you put the words in there. Again, that goes right back to keywords and uh, search uh, optimization and the whole works. Sometimes it's better to use some of those types of words, and sometimes it's not. Most of the time it's not, but there are sometimes just like some of the other things we've been talking about. Uh... I love Edward Starr. I love uh, late 60s, early 70s, soul funk, definitely. I, I agree. If you don't know um, uh, Edwin Starr, look up Stop Her On Sight, uh, War. Uh, Backstreet was my first high-dollar Northern Soul record. Was In fact, I got two of them at the very same time for a quarter piece. It was a white label promo. The first ever high, higher dollar record I ever sold was, was Edwin Starr Backstreet. It was a promo white label. It was on uh, his original record label. I got 188 bucks for the first copy and almost twice that for the second one when I listed it the next month. Um, he, he's good. I, he, Floor Stompers. Um, Agent 00 Soul is one of my favorites by him. And that's when I sent to a Patreon. It, it, that's a floor stomper. Um, we had talked in a live Patreon about um, another word they use, which I can't use here. Um, it's not the best terminology, but <clears throat> floor stompers is what I call that kind of stuff. Uh, Edwin Star. I got you. I know. I, I, I completely got you. Lena, how are you doing? Good evening. Hang on. Now my feet just popped around. Don, I know you tend to test everything. Do you have any recommendations for best time to send offers out on eBay, morning or evening? I don't worry at all about time frame. I do them constantly. It, the more you do, the more you're going to have opportunity to send out. I can I can almost guarantee you that that's the case. For like two weeks, like a month or two ago, I was writing down how many we had and when I sent them out and all that kind of stuff. Maybe a little, maybe it's three or four weeks ago, maybe even longer than that now that I think about it. But it. I did that before, and I did it a couple of times. I did it a year or two ago before, too. And like with, if I put a sale on, those numbers all go up. So I can prove that they go up when you put a sale on. I don't care what anybody else says. My numbers, I feel, are solid because I spent the time to, to do it. <clears throat> I don't see as there's a, a, a worry on the date. I just put it so they've got 48 hours to respond. Um, because what happens is that they'll see it in their box hours later. They may be at work and can't check it for eight hours. So I never worry about when I send them out. 
as soon as I get up, if there's some, I send them out. Um, I usually try and cut it off sometimes if I've got a lot going out in mail, and I won't send them out till after 11 when I print my labels. Labels are printed at 11 o'clock every day of the week. And after that's when I usually send out a second batch if I'm up. If I'm up at 6, I usually send some out then and hope that maybe I can get a few more payments and just to get them out right away and be done with them. Um, and then after at 11 o'clock, I usually do them 11.30 by the time there. And then I do them like every couple hours all throughout the day. Not necessarily me, but we in general will do the wife or whoever else is, is, is handy will do them too. I think as quickly as you can do them, the more chance you'll have to get more. Because let's say you've got 100 watchers on items now. If somebody else, they're watching somebody else's items that are similar to yours, and they send the offer out first, eBay limits how many offers to watchers you can get so you're not flooded, so it's not an annoyance. It can be an annoyance when you get hundreds of these things in, so they're limited. So if somebody out there, let's say they're watching your item and somebody else's, and they're the same identical item, if you wait... The other person may not be waiting. <clears throat> it's dog eat dog to some extent. So you want to be ready and take advantage of any opportunity that you have. Be the first one to send it out. I never wait. Just do it all day long. Don't just. I was originally doing it a couple times a day. Now, whenever I get a, a moment, there's always a screen opened. In fact, there's one open on the two. I've got a laptop here, a laptop. In fact, there's probably three open right now. So wherever I'm at, there's always one opened. So all I got to do is take a quick second. Now, I don't send them out to every item. I, I Some items, if I just listed them or I have a sale out, I might not touch certain items. But as a general rule, I, I constantly send them out. And that's what my honest recommendations are. If you keep track <clears throat> and write the numbers down, how many you have, if you're only doing it a couple times a day, I can almost guarantee you if you're doing it throughout the day, your numbers will be higher. My, my, that's, what, that's what my results were over a, a long, concerned time frame. A couple of weeks we did it for. And it doesn't take long. Whenever you do it, just put a quick dash or something down, you know? <clears throat> I reviewed a Sears Duncan. I viewed a seller. They had a master's degree and found my info on what they need to do was a, a complex. I have a master's degree, but I don't, it depends on what their master's degree is in, I guess you could say. Some master's degrees aren't, aren't worth a whole bunch, I should say. I'm happy with mine. Hang on, I'm frozen up here. There's street smart and there's book smart too, don't forget. Derek Wolf, I got lucky and just uh, sourced a large stamp collection time to get researching. Stamps are tricky. I'm going to tell you right now, stamps are extremely tricky varieties if they're vintage if they're not like 19th century or china or something most of the rest of them aren't worth a fortune other than some a few here and a few there so knowing your stamps making sure you don't pay too much is another key thing too <clears throat> i know a lot of people have overpaid for stamps uh, a lot of people sunday fun day pamela Saban, how are you doing good evening Diego mar welcome from the uk welcome welcome from across the sea I include shipping because some buyers will click on the free shipping only items and also eBay will list my free shipping items as fast and free. <clears throat> Atlas Attic, let, let me let me put it this way. If if a if you're selling collectibles, a collector doesn't care if it's free shipping or not. I'm going to tell you straight out. If I want something, I don't care how the person's shipping it. I just want that item. I would, I would honestly recommend people, if you're selling collectibles, not to think of it that way. No disrespect to you at all, Atlas Attic. Again, this is business. This is my years of doing this would say that, that I don't see that as the issue with collectibles. Most person, nobody's going to limit something that's scarce or rare or a specific comic they've been looking for because it's free. I'll say it that way. Clothing, yes. Fast and free would be my honest recommendation for anybody dealing with clothing. But if you're selling vintage and collectibles, no, I would not ever recommend that specifically in my book. I charge for shipping for everything, every single vintage piece that I do. The only thing I didn't was was the clothing market. Religiously, I always always gave free shipping on clothing, not on the other stuff. And I don't have any adverse effect. If I'm looking for uh, something to finish a collection or something, I don't care how it's shipped. I don't care if it's fast and free. I just want to know that the, the buy... I, I look more at the buyer's feedback than I would ever look at if it's fast, free, or anything. I don't care 
if I buy it today, I know I'm going to get it. I don't care if it takes a week or two to get here. That's, that's just me. I'm never in a hurry because I've got so much other things I can do. Nothing that I buy buy is, is needed immediately, ever. I always try to keep extra. Again, I'm not trying to rant and rave, but that would be my personal opinion on that. If, if you are worried about that for collectibles, that's not going to be a consideration, in my personal opinion, from all these years of doing this. Uh, again, that's, that's my take on it. On eBay for common items, one should be comparing their listings with the top ones in the best match search results. Yeah, I guess it depends on the item specifically you're talking about. Um, <clears throat> common items, most of my stuff isn't common, so I, it's hard hard to relate to some of that. But when we do sell common items, I still don't... I look at probably the person who has the highest feedback results and judge by what they're doing usually and go by that. The ones who have the highest feedback results usually have the best image, and I usually will look at what somebody else's image are. There's nothing wrong with looking at your competitor and seeing what they're doing. I didn't come up with the zoom-in idea. My competitor did, one of the competitors that I've dealt with for a while, and I tried it, and sure enough, the zoom-in has always been a boost. Always, 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 always been a boost for us. Um... Let me pop on down. Pamela Saban, vintage costume jewel. You can't beat that. And that stuff you can usually get in good quantity, too. I've always found out. I can buy jewelry around here like 20 pounds, you know, at a reasonable price. Captain Whack and Cracker, how are you doing? Good evening. Peoria, welcome, welcome. Going out of town for six days soon. Any recommendations on how to handle my eBay account? <clears throat> Time away and messaging people as items sell, making sure. Um, we've got people, so I don't usually I haven't closed down my business in, in years. Um if it was me, <clears throat> I would probably put it on vacation mode or maybe shut it off for two days, put it on vacation mode reactivate your store the day or day or so you before you come back depending on the day you come back like if <clears throat> i'm going to be back on the weekend i would probably turn it back on thursday night so anything that sells friday wouldn't immediately go out anyway so i'd have till monday so i'll be back anyway so you can limit how much time you say you're on vacation that way <clears throat> the only thing i'd worry about is if you sell a bunch and if Watch what time you have it turned back on. Because if you sell a bunch, you may have to ship those out based on that return time if you activate it too soon, I guess I would say. Like if I have 11 o'clock ship time, I wouldn't want to turn on that I'm <clears throat> back in town until after 11 on Friday. That way, even if I don't get back till Sunday, I can still collect normal sales and it won't show on vacation, even if it's only a couple extra days. You'll sell more not being on vacation mode. I'll tell you right off the bat. No, no question about it. <clears throat> it's one way to at least negate the last couple days of your vacation or whatever you're doing. Always, you know, come back on a Sunday evening. That way you can turn your store back on Friday after mail, your mail deadline. And then you'll have <clears throat> your most of Friday. It'll look like you're still home even if you're out of town. All of Saturday, it'll look like you're home even though you're still out of town. You don't get home till Sunday evening. You still got most of Sunday. You're still technically out of town, but it looks like you're there. So <clears throat> that's my play on it, I would say. Yeah, I do sell quite a bit of vintage jewelry myself. Um, we're, I didn't realize we're at the hour and a half mark. I'm going to take Carlene's answer here. <clears throat> I'll take Carlene last, and then we'll probably end it here. Question, I have items that I need to identify. I believe they could be worth money, i.e. crystal-colored cut wine glasses. What are options? I've looked into Dr. Lori, but she is very expensive. <clears throat> I don't know. I don't... I'm terrible on some names. If you're in my Patreon page, you're welcome to post some images on Patreon. <clears throat> if you think they're really expensive and you don't want to pay, um, you might try one of the auction houses. If you've got <clears throat> an idea... Excuse me. <clears throat> I've been talking a lot these days. <clears throat> like maybe reaching out to Heritage or something. If you think it's a high price set and you seriously think that, Reach out to Heritage. The only thing I would say, if you reach out to them, don't snub them if they want to sell it. 
you know in all honesty most of the time you'll probably get more money out of it selling your items to like a heritage auction site Christie's, sotheby's or something than you would on ebay i suggest heritage because sotheby's um, has a minimum requirement for them to be interested it used to be a thousand bucks um last when i sent them a book uh that i was interested in having them deal with heritage is different and they also have structured sales on very specific items so <clears throat> that could be a, a good good option for you there there's also a couple of of uh, sites that just auction off or have like specialty auctions on high-end glass and tableware too just fyi and <clears throat> boy my voice is going out there's also a replacement china service uh company that buys high-end um glasses and dishware as well like expensive sets like plates that may cost or sell for four or five hundred dollars and stuff you can sell to them for several hundred dollars and then they they obviously want to make a profit too but that would be another option there we're going to end it off on here we've got just over 200 people in the house now 111 likes if you do enjoy the conversation you have enjoyed it please hit that thumbs up it does help give us a little traction <clears throat> excuse me on the channel I do thank everybody for coming on. Uh, there will be a new Patreon video up uh, by Saturday for sure. It is done. Um, and I do have another video shot for tomorrow for here. Well, I actually got a couple, but um, I'm not sure which one I'll put up for YouTube tomorrow. Again, next week there'll be some news. I've got some other things going on. A lot of stuff behind the scenes that maybe I'm not going to be talking about right away, but... As it gets closer to Christmas, I'll be announcing some other things. Um, we did get new postcards printed and delivered already. Um, I may do a giveaway when I do the next video for the art professor um, because I got me ordering it and some of the graphic editing I did to produce the cards in that video as well, too. So anyway, I thank everybody for coming on. Hopefully you had uh, enjoyed the show. Hopefully you at least got some content out of it. Uh, I thank you and hopefully have a good, safe day. <laughs>